Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial where we show you the tools and resources we use in our real estate business. This is a follow-up to the previous Podio tutorial on project management. This is part two of, I'm not sure how many, um, there's quite a lot to cover, so we'll just keep going with it. Um, I mentioned in the last video that uh, we're gonna be getting into some of the details as far as internal labor and budgeting and things like that. If you haven't yet watched the first video, I recommend you do so, just so you understand some of the apps we have set up in this Podio workspace and the fundamentals as far as how things work. But if you watch it, uh, that's great. Let's go get going into this new video. Um, so what we're gonna look at today is um, some of the views we have set up, how you can actually manage your work and uh, some specifics that exist within the deliverables app. So the first thing I want to talk about in the deliverables app is the uh, labor is internal field. So we talked briefly about it in the last video. I'm gonna explain it right now. So if we scroll down within our deliverables app, we see the field for uh, labor is internal, yes or no. So what this does is it allows us to distinguish between tasks that we do ourselves, whether personally or within our company, or those tasks that we sub out to other contractors, okay? Uh, we found this to be very useful when it comes to scheduling and allocating resources throughout uh, various projects. We're able to look at our calendars and look at our different views and say, what are we doing inside our own company and what is being done outside of our company by other subs? That's one thing. The other thing it allows us to do is to calculate um, the amount of time and money that we are spending ourselves on projects. And this really goes into the profitability of such projects. If you listen to my Bigger Pockets podcast, you heard me talk about being able to pay ourselves for the work we do on our flips. So um, one thing that's very important to my business, and I suggest you do the same, is that even if you decide to do some work yourself, maybe you're handy, maybe you're a carpenter, uh, maybe you can do some painting, whatever that is, that's okay um, to do that. We do that a lot. The thing is, you should budget for that, um, and you should try to make your projects look as realistic as possible. So um, what I mean by that is, if you're gonna do the work yourself, still put in a labor uh, cost for that. Now, you may or may not actually exchange cash uh, from your business to yourself, but you should account for your time so that you get a realistic view of what this project and what this rehab costs, okay? And what this internal labor field allows us to do is to say, all right, we have two hours of labor accounted for here. Is this my own labor, my company's own labor, or is this somebody else, a contractor? Okay, so you can say yes or no here. Um, and then we can look at a project on a holistic view. If I get out of here and go to my project, uh, we already talked about how we calculate the overall project budget. That's great. But I also want to know what is our internal labor that's going into this. So of this 14,600, 3,000 of that is internal labor. That's for our company. So the fact that we account for that means, one, we know um, how much value am I adding to the building, to the unit. I'm adding the 14,000. If I didn't account for any labor that I was doing myself, I wouldn't understand how much equity I'm building into uh, the building. I, it would be tough when it comes to tax time and all of that. But also this internal labor, we can potentially pay ourselves depending on how you're set up. I know with my business, the way we'll do it is we'll budget no matter who's doing the work um, for all of the labor that is needs to be done. And then when it comes time to get our draws and to pay our contractors, well, we actually pay ourselves. So all that internal labor, that 3,000 in this case, will go to ourselves, okay? So um, this is a great way to understand within a project how much, how much value in a dollar amount are you adding, whether it's you personally or your business. Now, in some cases, that might be close to 100%. There's some of you guys out there who flip a whole house yourself, okay? And, and that may be right, may be wrong, it's up to you to decide that. But if that's the case, it'd be um, irresponsible to not account for your time. You wouldn't understand just how much value you're adding to the project, okay? So give yourself some credit, mark the things as internal labor, but still calculate a cost for them, all right? Um, the other thing that this internal labor allows us to do is to allocate our resources. So I'm gonna switch back to deliverables and we're gonna take a look at our calendar view. Now, if you haven't used the calendar view in Podio yet, I suggest you take a look. It's really great. It's a really easy way to 
adjust um, your working times on things. So you can see here just a quick calendar view of the deliverables associated with 122 Buffalo Street. From this view, I'm able to take a task like this patch and repair subfloor, and I can move it around. I can click and drag it, depending on what day I'm gonna work on it. The other thing you can do is you can make it take longer, right? So I'm taking three days now instead of the one. I can take this whole thing and move it to Tuesday through Thursday. So it's a really nice way to click and drag things around. Um, for example, this drywall might go shorter, that's fine, whatever it is, okay? Click and drag, nice and easy. Now where internal labor helps us is I can set up a calendar view, and I've done it here, that filters on internal labor. So if I go to this calendar view, it shuts off all those things that I'm not doing personally. And where this comes into play is maybe I have multiple projects that I'm working on, and I want to see uh, where is my business, or maybe it's me personally, going to be on any given day? What project am I going to be working on? Where do I need to be? Maybe I see multiple project tasks stacked up on the same day. Is it feasible for me to really get those things done on the same day? Or do I need to move some things around and shuffle some things around? I don't care as much about the external labor. Now, obviously, I have to coordinate those workers and get them to the right place at the right time. But um, I'm more concerned with the work I actually need to do. So this view is great for that. Uh, being able to filter on internal labor is great for that. The second thing we're gonna talk about today is budgets. Now, I call them budgets. There's maybe a better name for it, but it is what it is. I use it. I use budgets. It works out really well. Now, the reason it's called budgets, if I click on this, you'll see a big list of quote-unquote budgets. This came from the template that we use used to use to calculate our rehab costs. If I flip over to that, now you guys all have access to this if you want it, it's on the uh, Income Digs website. Uh, this is how we used to calculate project costs, and we still use this to a bit of an extent. You see it's very similar to in Podia, we have material, labor, and other, but we go through the big giant list of all the things that you could possibly need to do on a rehab project, and we go in and, and enter the numbers here. This big list, all of these lower level items, is what make up my budgets in Podio. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to categorize all the work I'm doing very easily and then I can see it in stages and in phases. And um, that really helps when you have a very large project and you wanna see things, You know, maybe it's 200 tasks, but you only care about, let's say, um, stage one and stage two. So I brought this into Podio and I have all of those budgets laid out. They're associated stage and they're associated phase, okay? So every task, every deliverable has a, an associated budget, and then we calculate, we do a lookup on the stage and phase. So let's take a look at one of those. If we look at our deliverables, let's do this new drywall one. So that um, we can tag to a budget. I think we call it sheet rock. Okay, new sheet rock. Cool, got it. And then the stage and phase will automatically populate for me. That's just a simple formula. Okay, so that's good, that's fine. Now what I can do here is I can look at um, a table view as this comes up, and you can sort based on the phase. And so that allows me to look at all of my project deliverables in a logical order, okay? Because we've already set up those phases, you know, one, two, three, four, one A, one B, et cetera, I can look at what gets done first, second, third, fourth, fifth, okay? This really helps me to stay organized, um, and I think it'll help you too. And if you wanted to change these around, I mean, these we've been using for a while and they seem to work well, they're pretty comprehensive, but you can easily add one to this. Maybe something's not captured here. I'm not sure what one of those would be. Um, we have pretty much everything, but you could easily add to these as your projects change or in, in things uh, adjust. The other thing that we have the ability to do in these is I added a um, lessons learned so maybe as you're doing project over project over project and you're doing flooring, you always forget to maybe budget for getting nails for your hardwood flooring guy. Maybe that's something you forget to do. Um, put that in the lessons learned and then the next time you, you have to do flooring, it'll show up as a lesson that was learned and you can of course then um, you know put that in the other costs so that you don't lose out on that. All right, so nice little trick. This works really well for us. Um, so 
that was, uh, you know, the second step in our project management tutorials here. I wanted to at least address those few fields that we skipped over yesterday. So hopefully you get an idea of what those are for and, and how we use those in our business. And hopefully you can use them in your business too. So um, again, much more to come in this series, a lot more to cover on project management. There's a lot to, uh, lot to tackle here. So leave your comments, leave your questions. If there's anything specific that I went over too fast, uh, put it here and I will be sure to answer it in the next video or in the comments themselves. In the meantime, check out all the free resources and tools available at IncomeDigs.com. I'll talk to you guys soon.